Welcome back everybody. Today's video is going to be a tutorial with the PolyFX Digit. If you've been keeping up with the channel, you'll know I'm a big fan of this device and all the amazing things it can do. But today, I want to show you how to use it in a very specific and limited function. That is recreating a classic guitar rock amplifier in a kind of DI setting. So we're going to go for a generic kind of crunchy Marshall tone with some reverb, some delay, I'm going to add the foot switches and see if this little box can cut the mustard as a direct solution either live or in the studio. Let's do it. We're going to start with four basic modules. I have two EQs, one placed at either end of the chain and sandwiched in the middle. I have a power amp emulation, the power amp super. I really like this one for Marshall style sounds and then a mono cab. Both EQs are bypassed at the moment. So let's just set up the amp and the cab. The first thing I'm going to do is select a cabinet impulse. There are several factory impulses and you can also import your own. I'm uh, going to be super biased here and choose one of my own factory IRs, this LT TV mix. This is based around my Marshall cabinet with 25 watt greenbacks and I love the way it sounds. Then the Power Amp Super, I've just got all the sliders in the middle on the bridge pickup of my PRS Custom 24. It sounds like this. Nothing too remarkable just yet. Let's go to this first EQ and you'll see that I've actually got quite a radical EQ curve in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you hear what this EQ does in front of the amplifier. Then I'm going to talk about why I did it. So let's hear it. Beautiful stuff. So it already sounds a lot more like a typical guitar amplifier. And what this is doing is emulating the tone stack of something like an old Marshall. If you look up Duncan's tone stack generator on the internet, this is a free application, which will basically let you plug in virtual values into these classic amp circuits and have a look at what the resultant EQ curves are like for their tone stacks. If you do that for a Marshall, you get something that is very, very vaguely uh, resembling this curve in here. But what I like about this EQ curve is that we don't have to just stick to those classic values. So what I did here was pull out a lot of the bass before the power amp sim. You probably heard that the power amp sim was very bassy and muddy sounding. Then I've really boosted the mid range and the top end there. So that gives us that kind of Marshall style tone stack. Then I can go back in to the power amp emulation and turn the gain up or down and play around with the EQ. <laughs> And just playing around with my guitar volume, tone, and pickup controls on there. That's uh, kind of doing what an amp would do. So that is going to do us for the preamp section, the mono EQ, the power amp, and the cab. And then what I'm going to do is with the second mono EQ is just roll off some excess low end and some excess high end. This is like a studio style EQ. There's a lot of high frequencies and a lot of low frequencies in this guitar sound that when you put them in a mix, uh, you know, your front of house engineer or your mix engineer is going to cut those out anyway so let's go for that and this is what it sounds like <laughs> So perfect if you want to send that direct to front of house at a gig. Alrighty, let's do a few more things. I'm going to add in a reverb module and a stereo EQ. 
I've connected my reverb and my EQ in parallel, and let's go through and find a suitable convolution reverb. Again, there are several fantastic factory reverbs from analog reverb devices like EMT plates and springs to digital reverb devices. One of my favorites are these 480L, these old lexicon impulses. And there's some really beautiful sounding plate style and hall style algorithms and captures in there. So I'm gonna go for one of these fat plate number one. I just really like the way it sounds. Let's hear it straight up. We can try fat plate number two if we want a little bit more decay. That's more like it. And I'm just gonna bring the level down on this. Beautiful, now we can go and EQ those reverb tails. I'm gonna take out a little bit of low end and a little bit of high end on there as well. I say a little bit, but there's actually quite a lot of high end that I'm pulling out there. That is just adding a really nice kind of room style ambience in there. Uh, there's also IR captures of actual rooms and physical spaces, which you can play around with as well. But I really like those 480L captures. They're just beautiful and they work really well in a mix. Next, let's add some delay. In this example, I've chosen to connect the delay again in parallel to my main signal and the reverb. So the delay isn't gonna be affected by the reverb trails. Let's just have a listen to it at the stock settings. Now, if you see my videos on how I like to dial in delay, I like to pull a lot of high end out of there and we can do that with the tone control. Let's try it just past halfway. That's really nice. All I would go for is maybe a slightly longer delay time. Let's try something like 550 milliseconds. Why not? And let's hear that. All I would change about that is I would probably bring the feedback down a little bit. Now let's modulate this delay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select an LFO and we're gonna use that as a controller and attach it to the delay warp setting. So if you do this at the stock settings, it sounds pretty wacky using multi-touch again and I'll select warp. Uh, this kind of doesn't lie in the spectrum of I guess a traditional guitar delay. It's really, really wacky. <laughs> kind of sounds like you're scratching a vinyl record. So let's do this. Let's hit the LFO control and we'll just bring the level down and we'll be really conservative with it. We'll put it at 0.01 and this just gives us a nice modulated wobble. We can change the LFO shape. We could try something kind of spiky. I actually kind of like that. You can try a random LFO or a square wave or a triangle in there as well. I'm gonna go with this kind of saw style thing just for something a little bit different. And now I've got a stereo reverb, I've got a delay and I've kind of got a crunchy amp style sound. What would be really cool would be if I could have the foot switches assigned to turn the reverb and the delay off. So the way we're gonna do that is a two-step way. We need two foot switch modules and we need two voltage control amplifiers, VCAs. Let's add those. I've actually deleted a couple of modules on there just to aid with the clarity on this particular patch. So I've removed the LFO from the delay for now, and I've also removed the EQ from the reverb, just so everything reads a little bit clearer. We've got signal flowing from the mono cab now down to this VCA, which I've connected to this foot switch. So that is just gonna act as an on off switch. Signal will either pass through here or it won't, and then it will go to the reverb and then to the stereo outputs. And the same idea with this delay, this VCA and this particular foot switch attachment. Let's hear it. And there you have
have it. That's a pretty basic DI guitar rig using Digit. We use the mono EQ here to emulate a guitar amp tone stack. We've got power amp emulation, cab emulation, and some studio style EQ. And then we have set up parallel delay and reverb chains that are foot switchable using the unit. Hopefully this tutorial teaches you about the workflow on Digit and how you can get what you want if you know what you want. Using it solely as a guitar amp emulator is massively, massively underselling the unit because this thing can do pretty much anything you imagine and there are so many awesome, inspiring modules in there. And this is just a very vanilla setup, you know, crunch, delay, reverb, but it is great in a pinch and it's great having it in such a small, compact and uh, quite frankly beautiful and inspiring unit you know if you've got this on your pedal board you know you've got a backup guitar amplifier as well you could just emulate this patch keep it on there in case of emergency if you have any other questions about digit or how to use it on guitar please let me know in the comments i will definitely do more videos like this if there is the demand for it as always stay safe be good to one another i'll see you next time